So while we're pinging that, um, let's go take a preview of the final product here. Let's go ahead and move our serial monitor for a second. So this is the interface. Um, like I said, it's kind of simple. Um, what's going on here? I'll run through it real fast. Button turns it on. This funny little graphic here will turn on. And this is a log. It's basically grabbing the IP addresses um, from whoever's on the site right now, pushing this button and using an, uh, an API uh, to give me a rough idea of where they are. I'm actually not in Yoder, Indiana, but I am sort of near there. But anyway, so if I turn this on, there you go. You see the number in the serial monitor here is now one. Um, but uh, yeah, it's because of that, it's happening almost, uh, yeah, pretty much real time. So hopefully you see where this is going. Um, and again, this is uh, this is just changing that uh, data.txt file from uh, containing a one or a zero. So now that we're getting data, let's go ahead and uh, first let's add the uh, delay. And we'll make it like a second. And uh, actually we're going to go ahead and end the connection each time to reconnect. All right, so we have that. And hopefully this uh, makes it so it's not pegging my server nonstop. Um, all we need to do now is tell the uh, um, GPIO two pin to do something when uh, we we have connected. So digital right. The, uh, if you remember, we need to tell it what pin, which is pin 2. And we're going to convert the payload to an int. Because the uh, digital write doesn't want our string version of 1 or 0. It wants an integer to know whether it's on or off. So, assuming we're getting a 1 or a 0 from that text document, you would think that the uh, light's going to turn on and off. But uh, it, it's going to hold whatever value it is until we change that value. So it will stay on or stay off until we make that file have a different value. Now there will be a little more of a lag than we had before, um, but that's to uh, not make my server cry. So save and uh, upload. All right, so we've got a response. You see this is going just a little bit slower. Um, but uh, when I click this, it should change that text file to a zero, which should turn off the light. There you go. So you see there is a little more delay than uh, before. But there you go. Now I am, I could be anywhere that there is an internet connection and access this page and start messing with electronics in my home. And I think that is pretty awesome. And just because we're creepy stalker people, we are monitoring who is doing the uh, on and off switching. So that uh, that completes the, um, the microcontroller part of this, the Arduino part. So the next portion is going to be building the uh, web interface and we're going to do that live so that uh, people can interact with it. Before we do that I want to make sure you guys know that I'm going to assume that you have some web development knowledge. You know HTML, you understand CSS or you at least know how to use um, other resources like Bootstrap. We're going to do that which makes this look a little prettier. However, I did not spend a whole lot of time on this. I think I spent more time playing with the uh, little uh, light graphic than I did anything because that was fun. But uh, so we're going to utilize Bootstrap 
jQuery. And uh, I believe that's all I'm using for this. So I'm not going to explain Bootstrap. Um, I'll tell you what uh, classes I'm going to use and make sure you know where to put the stuff, but I'm not going to go through and explain how Bootstrap works. And um, I'm assuming that you already know some JavaScript and jQuery, so I'm not going to give a basics on that, but I will explain what I'm doing so you can follow along if you're not familiar with it. But I don't want to turn this into a hour-long uh, web development video. I'd like to just get this up uh, live and uh, show you how I did it. And uh, I will provide all the code on the GitHub page. But uh, just a recap on how that's going to go and what's all involved. If you're following along, there is some server-side um, stuff going on with uh, PHP that uh, handles the AJAX request that's going on here. So basically, there's just a PHP script that uh, will write the new value to the, uh, the file, the data.txt file, based on the button being pushed. Now there's also another portion that will um, be triggered by a JavaScript that's on an interval um, that will check the status of the uh, light by basically finding out what number is in a file at the moment. And that will update this button um, in semi real time. I probably have like a um, second delay on it or something, but that means that like I can say duplicate this page here and uh, if I turn it on here it's on over here turn it off it's off over here um, now not a totally amazing demo of this but once we do the live video when you guys start messing with it live it's going to automatically update the status on my screen as well as update the log and that is the other thing that PHP file is doing is running the stuff for the uh, log, and that's that's a little more overkill, um, but I'll look. We'll look at that a little bit because I think it's kind of fun. But if you want to run this yourself with your own board while you're following along, then uh, like I said you'll, uh, earlier, you'll you'll either need a uh, web server running locally, which I'm pretty sure this should be able to hit um, by giving it the uh, IP address of your computer. Um, and the location based on that, or if you have a remote web server um, that you can upload to that. Um, now the functions uh, or object, whatever, the stuff we're running in here, I ran into an issue with running HTTPS, which is why I have it running on one of my other, off my other domain name, uh, rather than the digital craft, because it was uh, giving me crap. So that's something to note too. If you're going to upload it, uh, make sure you have the ability to run it as just regular HTTP and not uh, secure. And that's it. I will see you guys in the live video.